Okay, so uh, I wanted to talk about body armor. And uh, I guess mainly uh, body armor as it would be, um, you know, concerning civilian use and uh, ownership of body armor. Um, just to cut, you know, right to the chase, I think there are two reasons that a civilian would need body armor. If you are going to be assaulting a target or if you are being assaulted, where you're going to be wearing body armor for a short amount of time and you know there's a, uh, a pretty clear reason why you're wearing it to give you extra protection and it's not going to be a long-term thing. Um, if you're going to be doing patrolling or bugging out, I think something like a chest rig, something lighter that's going to carry a, a decent amount of ammo and not be too heavy, it's probably a better option than something that adds potentially another 16 to 18 pounds of weight um, that your body is going to have to physically carry and, you know, like pounds equal pain. So, uh, and I guess one of the main reasons I don't think that wearing a plate carrier is going to be um, like really good for people in whatever scenarios they could be imagining is uh, most civilians aren't going to have that logistical support chain to, you know, provide them with potable water uh, to be hydrated and calories and all the food that you're going to need to <laughs> support carrying all that extra weight. You know, there's, um, you're, you buy your, yourself probably or have your family or whatever little group that you're with. Um, and food and water, if those situations happen, are probably going to be pretty scarce. And uh, so you're not going to really want to waste calories and water. You're going to want to kind of conserve a lot. So carrying an extra bunch of weight while you're going out patrolling or bugging out, whatever scenario you're thinking, um, all that extra weight probably isn't going to be as cool as it looks you know, on um, Instagram or whatever. So, I really do think that, oh, I mean, as far as owning it, I think everybody who can afford um, a plate carrier with plates should have them, um, if anything, just because there are certain people that don't want you to have them. I mean, every free person, I think this is part of your Second Amendment, is having something, you know, to protect yourself. But, that has like a little micro rig on it is uh, not as much, you know, as much ammo as you, you might need to be, I guess, like battle ready or whatever you're, um, I think we had like six or eight mags when we were deployed. It's if you didn't have like a belt fed or something, but um, I think a combat load is like six or eight mags, something like this. That's three, you could have double stack. I don't like getting too thick, but the way I see play carriers is this is a short-term solution for a known threat. So, uh, if you're going to be patrolling around or bugging out or whatever you're going to be doing, something light like this or a chest rig is probably going to be better or like an LBV, something with a camelback and a butt pack and some uh, just some sustainment stuff like a recce rig or whatever people are calling it these days. And uh, let's see, get my thoughts straight here. So just kind of to summarize, um, so for known threats, you're going to assault a target or you know you're going to be assaulted. I think body armor is great. Um, that's definitely good to have. I think everybody should have it. I don't think I don't think you should make yourself go broke to get body armor. You know, you got to prioritize stuff. But here's something else you got to think about too. Um, body armor only covers this spot. It's like Dumb and Dumber, where they're, oh, what if they had a shot you in the face? It's like, well, so this covers here your vitals. Doesn't cover usually your lower abdomen, your legs, your arms, your face. Um, you know, if you have a good Kevlar or some type of ballistic helmet, I guess that would be good. But um, if you're wearing it, then you can get shot through the sides. You know, um, in combat and deployed, um, troops have a, you know, they have medical support. So if you were to get shot somewhere else in the arms or legs, you know, uh, you can get medevaced or get some type of care, get a, the care of a corpsman, and then get sent back to a 
a hospital somewhere. Well, so that this would be good because it's going to save your life more than likely, but um, you might be out of the fight, but you're still going to be around and be able to be, you know, uh, patched up somehow. But those are just some of my basic thoughts about how I see civilians using body armor. Now, if you were going to be in a defensive situation where you had a neighborhood full of people and you thought there was going to be a big riot or, uh, you know, somebody was coming to assault you guys um, and you know that there's a known threat and you know you're not going to be doing a lot of movement or just, you can have this stage somewhere where you can put it on where you won't be wearing it uh, nonstop, I think that, um, you know, that, that'd be good. Um, maybe wear it like a time like that. But wearing this for like bugging out or patrolling or whatever, um, I think there's probably better um, options. Um, everybody's talking about recce stuff recently. Um, I have a LBV, LBVE, one of those acronyms. <laughs> Has a camelback on it, a butt pack, some um, canteens on the side, and uh, I think it carries um, six great magazines across the front it has a couple little um, pockets um, I would use that if I was going to be like going out and making a lot of um, movement where I was covering a lot of ground but I wear this probably around the house um, you know having options in the bed and having something that you know you can kind of use for different platforms is also probably a plus but um, I don't know tell me what you guys think uh, what do you think your um, like how do you see body armor being you know working for you or how do you see it what's role what role do you think body armor has in your you know stuff um, she has a couple other things I have can't remember can't remember if I put this up but uh this is a head-on tactical. It's like a placard. It also has a little um, like harness system. It's a three mag. Um, the G code, little micro chest rig. Has a little dangler. Something like that. I think it's good for the range or something. But this light to wear under stuff. But it's a ton of options. Um, I wouldn't say don't copy what somebody else has. Um, really think of why you're buying it and uh, what kind of role you see it in and um, I don't know a lot of this stuff is uh, like what if type scenario so think about what you're are what you're gonna need for what you expect or what you think could happen and if you can afford it and um, whatever get it and uh, but oh here's another one main thing you know, they say a lot of times uh, good tactics um, will, you know, you may not need body armors, body armor or, you know, armor or whatever if you use good tactics. Um, if you're utilizing good cover, um, I know a lot of structures these days, like most uh, homes are not made with brick or stone and uh, don't, don't offer any like ballistic protection like they did back in the day. Like we're not fighting out of castles, um, you know, like where you live, most houses, you know, uh, AK round will use it through the whole house. So um, if you are out and about and using good tactics, you know, could prevent you from having to to wear um, hardening. If you pick good cover, um, that could prevent you from having to need body armor. But, um, you know, everything is an asset, but you don't want to wear stuff that's going to hinder you. And also keep in mind, um, carrying a lot of weight it's going to demand calories and it's going to demand you to be rehydrated and be physically capable of carrying that extra weight. So just uh, some stuff to consider. You know, I'm not a, an, an expert. Um, I've been out of the military for, wow, uh, since 2004. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's been a while. So I know there's a lot of different uh, SOP changes that have happened and, um, you know, philosophy of use for stuff. And stuff kind of changes all the time. You know, like uh, when I first got in, we didn't have uh, plates, sappy plates at all. And then we got sappy plates and, um, you know, 
So just things could, that can to consider. Uh, one thing to remember, a 20 inch rifle shooting M193 at 20 yards is going to um, put little holes right through AR-500. So keep that in mind. Um, 20 inch rifles weren't super big. Um, a lot of boomers probably have them though. And um, a lot of retro rifles are getting big these days. So if you have an AR-500 armor, just keep that in mind, that 55 grain stuff will make little little squishies holes all through your uh, AR-500 stuff. So uh, that's a whole nother big debate I'm not really going to speak on, you know, um, the different types of armor available. Um, you know, some can expire, some messes up with heat, or um, if you drop it, impacts, and I don't know. But hope this helped, um, maybe helped um, prompt you guys to think of some stuff or ask questions or um, if anything, just leave a comment and tell me if you think that uh, <laughs> I'm uh, ridiculous or, you know, don't know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm okay with that. So, um, I don't know, I haven't made a video like this in a while where I just kind of rambled um, incoherently about something that somebody's already made 2,000 videos on. But, um, hope it helped. Just something to keep in mind. And uh, you guys have a good night. So I forgot to add one thing. So if you are wearing plates and you get shot in the plate, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, these plates are awesome. These plates were the best things ever. But if you are wearing plates for two months straight and you never get shot, you're going to be like, these plates are stupid and heavy and I hate them. So uh, just something to, to keep in mind. Um, you never know what's going to happen. They could save your life or they could just uh, make you mad and exhausted.